And uh, so I won't spend a lot of time on this. Uh, most of us are victims of this nonsense promoted by our textbooks and even in National Geographic and Scientific American publish these crazy things, the soul I, that we came from monkeys and that nonsense. When you get into this and study it with any uh, depth at all, you'll discover something astonishing. Not only is this nonsense, it's deliberate fraud. The Heidelberg man was contrived from a single jawbone. The Nebraska man in 1922, Henry Osborne, did it from just one tooth. And they later discovered it was from an extinct pig. The Piltown man, you hear so much about. Charles Dawson developed this from the jawbone of a modern ape. It was deliberate fraud. We now know it was filed and treated with iron salts to look old. Now, if you get to the Peking man in 1921, the evidence has disappeared, but it also bears evidence of an outright fraud. These are not people who made a discovery and were just misguided. These are people who deliberately contrived these things to be misleading. The Neanderthal man, found in a cave in the Neander Valley near Dusseldorf. At the International Congress of Zoology in 1958, they concluded that it was just simply an old man suffering from arthritis. The Java man, 1922, uh, in 1891, uh, skull cap, uh, a 50-foot femur thigh bone that was not, was not even near it, was distant from it, and the, the evidence was concealed. It was teeth of a, a, an orangutan. The thing that disturbs you about paleontology is that it's littered with deliberate frauds, not just poor science, but deliberate frauds. So all this is still, you'll still find in the textbooks used in your schools to mislead our kids. In 120 years of searching, there have been no intermediate stages found to justify evolution. We could go on and on, but let's move on here.